To adequately analyze and discuss the Dominion, we need to take a look at the Federation. It is intriguing to consider a pre-Dominion War Alpha Quadrant and compare that to the Delta Quadrant and Gamma Quadrant. Certainly the power of quadrants was spread more among the Empires in the Alpha Quadrant than any of the other two quadrants. When thinking about the galaxy in Trek, I would have to say that I agree with SF Debris when he says that the Federation worked as an X factor. Unlike in the Delta and Gamma Quadrant, the Federation was a stabilizing force and even deterrent for any one empire to take over. Without the Federation, it is quite possible the Alpha Quadrant would be majority Romulan, or Klingon, or Tholian, or any number of other races. The Federation offered something that most other quadrants didn't. A certain amount of diversity. After the Dominion War, I think this premise becomes debatable as the Federation effectively absorbs a lot of the other powers, but we're currently comparing the Federation to the Dominion as of 2373. Now, depending on which Wayun you want to believe, the Dominion had existed for anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000 years. In that time, again, if we believe Wayun, the Dominion had never known defeat or surrender. The creation of the Dominion was based on one thing, fear. The Founders, given the name Changelings as a slur by the Solids, had been severely mistreated. They were different, and people treat things that are different harshly. It was this mistreatment that moved them to create an empire so that they would never be challenged, never be harmed again. They decided to breed their own solids for their own needs. We can't be completely sure if the Vorda and Jem'Hadar were created from existing species, though Weyun tells a story of how a Vorda saved a changeling, or if they were created from scratch in a lab. But we do know that once the founders created the Vorta and the Jem'Hadar, they were bred to be absolutely obedient. The Vorta and Jem'Hadar believed that the Founders were their gods, not completely inaccurate in some ways. As the Arbiters of the Founders, the Vorta and Jem'Hadar were sent out to gain territory through either diplomacy or conquest, and they were really good at what they did. Hundreds of races would come under the domain of the Dominion, for better or worse. The races would serve the Dominion, making everything for the totalitarian government, whether it was weapons, food, or other requirements. With no entity like the Federation strong enough to stand in their way, the Gamma Quadrant would become the playground of the Founders. And then, the discovery of the wormhole by the Federation and Bajorans. You know, it has been claimed that the Dominion is my favorite villain in Trek. Not unreasonable, Deep Space Nine is my favorite series, but it's simply not true that I favor the Dominion. I don't hate the Dominion, I think they are a perfect foil for the Federation, but they aren't my favorite. But what I do like about the Dominion is that they are like the Borg in that they have a technological edge over the Federation in almost every way, but also know how to play the game diplomatically. Unlike other enemies Starfleet has faced, the Dominion isn't afraid to utilize other governments and sow discord within the Federation itself. Indeed, this is how the Dominion first begin their plans to take over the Alpha Quadrant. Without even knowing it, the Federation would enter into a type of Cold War with the Dominion. The Alpha Quadrant powers would begin to explore the Gamma Quadrant, and the Dominion would sit back and wait. They would watch from afar, stay elusive. They would gather an immense amount of information, even before first contact. When Sisko was captured by the Dominion for the first time, the Jim Hadar would comment on the Federation Cardassian Treaty. They would talk about Klingons and other races. It would be startling how much was known by this mysterious enemy. The capture of Sisko would be where the Founders would first show their hand. The Dominion would move to destroy several ships and colonies in the Gamma Quadrant. A Jem'Hadar ship would exit the wormhole and beam through the shields of Deep Space Nine. When force fields were erected around the Jem'Hadar, the Jem'Hadar would walk right through them, providing a Bajoran data pad with a list of what had been destroyed. The Dominion made it clear, no more ships into the Gamma Quadrant, and Alpha Quadrant powers were to stay on their side of the wormhole. In response, the USS Odyssey, a refit Galaxy-class ship, unloaded all civilian and non-essential personnel onto Deep Space Nine, and then was dispatched with runabouts to retrieve Sisko. Three Jem'Hadar attack ships would devastate the Odyssey in runabouts, ultimately resulting in a suicide run by a Jem'Hadar ship to destroy the Odyssey itself. The beginning of the Cold War would become known to the Federation in the death of up to 15,000 Starfleet officers. Not wanting all-out war, but wanting to protect its assets, the Federation recommissioned the USS Defiant, one of the first warships created by Starfleet. No real scientific purpose, the Defiant-class ship was originally designed to fight and kill Borg. Under the command of Benjamin Sisko, the Defiant was sent in to establish direct communications with the Dominion. The Founders would use this as another piece in their chess game. The Defiant would be ambushed, and the crew placed into a simulation to determine how Starfleet officers would react to the Dominion's overt attempts to overthrow the Alpha Quadrant powers. This information would be invaluable to the Dominion. 
they would determine that an attempt to immediately take over the Alpha Quadrant would be fruitless. The crew was returned to the Defiant and ship allowed back to the Alpha Quadrant thanks to Chief Security Odo, a changeling himself. At this point, the Dominion would seemingly back off. The Federation would set up listening outposts on the other side of the Gamma Quadrant and ships would continue to explore. While starships, especially Starfleet starships, would go missing, it would seem the Dominion were more bluster than action. Nothing could have been further from the truth, though, as the Dominion began to secretly infiltrate the Federation and other Alpha Quadrant powers. The Dominion would identify all of the possible threats that could actually harm them. Among these threats would be the Tal Shiar and Obsidian Order. Ironically, they would somehow have missed Section 31, ultimately a fatal mistake. The Founders would infiltrate the Tal Shiar and Obsidian Order, they would then push the leaders in those organizations to move forward with a plan to destroy the Dominion. When both organizations attempted a surprise attack, they would find themselves in an ambush. This would result in the near destruction of the Tal Shiar and probable complete destruction of the Obsidian Order. The Founders believed these organizations would have caused problems for the Dominion, stopping them from moving forward with their plans to take over the Alpha Quadrant. They may actually have been right. Stay tuned next week as we take a look at the Dominion's destabilization of the Alpha Quadrant, Zinkathi Federation War, Federation Civil War, Klingon Cardassian War, Klingon Federation War, all plots that either succeeded or came close to it. We'll see you guys then. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to help the channel grow, please consider becoming a Patreon. Not only does it allow me to continue to make these videos for you, but there are additional benefits for becoming a lore master. Please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and guys, I will see you on the next Lore Reloaded.